Yes. Let's, let's put it this way. Would you, how many would consider maybe possibly entering the contest? Hey, just, just considering. Just, that's good. Hey, all right. I just wanted to know where we're at, and that, that's good. We'll take that. So, so can, can, I, can, I, uh, can I start with the joke? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Only because it's one of my favorites, uh, and I was raised Catholic. There was this poor parish in Louisiana, and the bishop was getting worried, but he had an idea. He brought the priest in, and he says, listen, we're going to fix this. I got an idea. You know, Next Sunday, when you ask for the donations in the collection box, we're, we're going to sing it in the Gregorian chant. And, and that way, you know, we'll lift people up. <laughs> and so the Sunday came along and they rehearsed and everything. And so the, the priest stood up and he said, I'm the priest of the church. I only make 50 bucks a week. We need your support and contribution. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the bishop got up and says, I'm the bishop of the parish. I only make $100 a week. We need your support and contribution. Just then, the organist stands up and says, I'm the organist for the church. I make $1,000 a week. Because there's no business life show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, that's one of my favorites. And actually, you know what? I went online. Yeah, this is a couple years ago when I was new at it. And I put... Uh, So why did that joke work? Let's talk about humor, and, and, and because we want to construct, we want to do the same thing with, with your audience, right? So what happened? Yes? You connect with the audience. Good, yet yeah, connection, if you don't have connection with the audience, you're, you're nowhere. It's got to be a communication line, so good. So yeah, that, that's actually a good point. So when you're up giving, and this is any speech, when you're up giving a speech, you're, you know, I, I went to a speech contest, not a uh, speech, uh, Ser uh, seminar one time, and this guy was good. wasn't a Toastmaster, but you know the drills he did for for public speaking. One of the drills, and we should do this at Toastmaster. He says, "I want when this next speaker gets up, he has a problem with eye contact, and we're going to do this with all the speakers. I want everybody to raise your hand while he's talking." And I don't want you to lower your hand until he's made contact with you. Isn't that great? Yeah. And so he would just, okay, there's a hand over there. You know, and you, the hand doesn't go down until you, you reach everybody. So, so that's a good point in making the connection with the audience. So I, I think of that when I'm doing it. Yes? It's uh, like magic. It's misdirection. You go in one direction, you go in one direction, and then you go far to the right, going against what's anticipated. That is to the spot. That's that's exactly what my my theory of it. You know, it's you're expecting this. It's just like when you're walking down the street, you're expecting the step to be there, and it's not there. You know, like the you're expecting to walk straight, and the banana peel goes up. You know, and that's the old classic gag. It's it's what's not expected. Yes. Well, it has to be really funny. The well, material has to, I mean, it has to, it has to be, the punchline has to be said right, I guess, to, you know, for, for, for the connection to, of the audience, yeah. that, they, that they give you the laugh when you had anticipated, and then, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But, the only thing is, is that when you tell a Catholic joke, you have to be able to make sure that the Catholic people are offended. You know, since I, <laughs> you know, you know, I thought of that. But there's the, the rule, you know, a Jewish people can talk about, you know, Julian, I'm, I'm Catholic, so I, I, think, I think I have the right to say so. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wonder if I have a Catholic school, you can't um, So when you're writing humor, or writing a spe humor speech, just go down, just start writing. Go down, go down a road and just say, well, how could this be misdirected? How, how could this be changed? And, and you're right, it's, it's not just misdirected, but it's also wildly exaggerated, you know, and wildly, like the priest and the bishop didn't expect this audience to get up, so it just kind of upset them, and also it's so much of a disparity, you know, a thousand versus fifty, but there's some truth in it, 
You don't know my speech if you have any ideas. Why? You know the benefits. Um, have you entered before? Uh, not in the humorous stuff. Oh, okay. well, great. So this is new territory. Uh -huh. Well, it's uh, then you know in entering other speeches, it's it's rewarding. It, you're you're actually competing against yourself. You're raising, hey, I'm going to raise the bar here and see if I can make it there. And why not do that on anything? So. Okay, uh, we were talking about humor and what is it? Um, maybe if I, I, I give a, give another one, and it's sort of on the same same line. I recently saw Steve Martin at the Hollywood Bowl. Wow, yeah, isn't that that's cool? Been great. It was, and, and you know he was there with the banjo, and it's what a group they've got. Uh, uh, there's an orchestra, <laughs> you know, a Hollywood Bowl that that backs him up. He's got a, a large group, and but he's Steve Martin, you know, so you expect something. And between songs, he would give a few, a few banters. And, but not all the time. Sometimes it was just, not serious, but it was just music. So he was going off on this one little story between songs and didn't really know. It sounded, uh, sounded interesting because he said, you know, I, I have to tell you, I've played the banjo for over 30 years, but this... I've been in a, in a band for only four years, and it's a new experience for me. And I can't tell you how, how much fun it is. You know, there's nights that, that were good. Nights that were just mediocre. Never bad, though. He says, and that's good. He says, but some nights, we knock it out of the park. I, I mean, we're just really great. But about a month ago, I went and saw Eric Clapton live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after uh, about 30 minutes of his time, I thought to myself, you know, he's not all that funny. He's musical. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need it, which is true. But see the switch? I mean, how many people were waiting to hear more along that line of how good this guy Eric Clapton was? Yes. And the whole audience was. I mean, he, and I think that's the key. You, you take the person down the line to where I was talking about the, the, you're walking down and there's a step there, but, you, but it's not. And it's like, oh, the step isn't there. You expected it to be there. He takes you down to where you're about that close to the step, you know. And so, so that's a clue to writing good humor. Don't just, just say that, uh, uh, well, I didn't go. Let's see. Well, what, what was one that uh, the, the poor par parish? You know, don't don't just say that. Uh, uh, then the organist got up and and and, and spoke. Uh, set it up as close as you can to reality. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of an example of it, but I can't. But uh, just make it look so real and get so close. And I think that's why they call it a punchline, because you you, know, you got all of this. Setup going up, and it's and, you know, Steve Martin says. By the way, a good book is is Born Standing Up, which I, I don't know if you guys have heard about. It, but in there, Steve Martin talks about what what is humor. It's set up punchline, set up punchline. Well, didn't they all start out sort of like what they call that stand-up comedian? So they probably went through the ringer a few times for their. <laughs> No, they. <laughs> you mean, yeah, I mean for the, things for not the working? Stand -up, no, for the stand up comedians, I mean, they, you know, they had hecklers, they had. Oh, you know, man. So they've kind of been through it a little bit, so they, they're more used to it, and they just whatever whatever comes out of their mouth, people just, you know, they either laugh or they, they don't laugh, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, well, and they learn what works. What, what works. Yeah. Right. Well, and, here, and here's what his hat right up to writing. Boy, and this, you, you can write this one down. And it doesn't work just for speak for uh, humor. Any speeches that you write, but for, for writing humor, he said, just start writing. Just start writing. Don't stop and think, well, this doesn't really sound right or that doesn't work. He said, just keep writing. Don't put any stops on it. And then, then when you're finished, the main job is take out all the crap. <laughs> <laughs> And, but you know what he's saying? He's saying take out, make it efficient, so all the jokes are efficient, and you know all the, so the precision is there, on, on your delivery. Maybe if I gave a, a, a few more 
examples that might have might help. Um, here's one. I always had a, a Ventura Ventura TV cable TV station today giving a an interview on humor, and and uh, it's a coincidence. And so I'll give you, I, I, here's, here's a joke I told there, it really didn't go over too well. For, for, but I'll, I'll try it with you guys. This was um, a Willie Nelson joke. And it's got the twist as well. So I'm, I'm giving you the twist because that's what we want when we write it. We want to have that twist. So uh, there was this journalist that didn't have any stories. Hey, I'll go to this. Uh, uh, Insane asylum, or this place where the, the, the institution, psychiatric institute, where I, and I'll interview one of the, the inmates there. That would be a great story. What's it like being you know, locked up? And so she went to the, to the place and saw this, this guy in a three piece suit, and she, oh, that's probably the supervisor. That's, introduced herself, said, I'm, I'm here at journalist, I'm trying to find one of the uh, patients so I can interview. She said, Well, I'm, I'm a patient. What? I mean, you, you look normal. He says, I, tell me about it. <laughs> I mean, so I've been trying to get out of here. I've, I've stuck. The, I've been, been just writing everybody. No, I can't get out of here. So I figured, well, if I can't get out, I might as well help people. So that's what I've been addressing. I'm setting a good example. I try to help. She, oh, my gosh, this is a story. I'm going to do a story on you. I can't believe it's fantastic what you're doing. And uh, I can I'm make an appointment. Now, great, I'll be back. She said, all right, I will be back. And we were to do a full story. I need, all I need is an hour. So she walked to the door. And she said, bye-bye. And she, as soon as she turned, he had picked up a Coke bottle and threw it, hit her right on the shoulder. And he says, don't forget. See, it didn't hurt Terry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe he had to be on Willie Nelson's bus. Yeah. <laughs> How was that a Willie Nelson joke? Well, he, he, I, I was expecting either Willie in there or a line from maybe a song. Was it, maybe not. Something didn't connect. Well, he smokes a lot of weed. <laughs> yeah, you have to be high. You understand make the connection. Or oh, you have to be a Willie Nelson fan. You realize he drinks Coke bottles so you get on the bus. There was no connection to Willie Nelson. See, see, I forgot to tell her that it was a joke that Willie Nelson said on the on the bus. That's for see. See, we're learning uh, things here. What what works and what doesn't work? No, he wrote a book and it was on the bus with Willie. And these were his favorite jokes told while he was on the bus. Okay, we're well, set up to this joke. And that's <laughs> <laughs> See, we're learning! Okay. Yeah. Home yeah. next school. Hey, by the way, that's my wife here. <laughs> oh, I love it. This should be on the bus later. Yeah. <laughs> Get your Coke bottles ready. <laughs> He's used to the Coke bottles. <laughs> We've got Willie's favorite joke. Willie, Willie, Willie Nelson lived in a town of 200 people, and population never increased because every time a baby was born, another man left town. But he was the guy who left town. Right? <laughs> You'll get the picture. Uh, uh, little short ones. Uh, little Billy was crying. Mommy, mommy, Tommy rode on my brand new wagon. And she, oh, that's, that's okay, Billy. We can wipe it off. No, Mama, he used a freaking nail. <laughs> you, you see, it's not as good when you can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think you just have to be on Willie's bus to make it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, I think we got this, the setup and the unexpected, you know, make it a twist. All right, so the other thing that helps is look at the skills you already have. And this is what's helped me a lot on all the contests, tall tales and humor speech contests. You're going to write half your speech or you're going to get the, the main focus, stable, Thing that you can build off of if you find if you have something that you already do really well, uh, something that's a skill. Uh, you can either play a, a song or you can sing a song. Uh, I'll tell you one humor speech. I want I, I 
but just talking about skills. I, 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 I took the music, you know, I took music lessons one time. I don't think you knew this. Singing lessons. Can you imagine me? <laughs> but, but it's good for, for speakers that train you get these vocal exercises. And uh, I saw this uh, this one song when I, that I happened to really have affinity for opera, believe it or not, growing up in Texas. <laughs> I started, I'm a painting contractor, and this, I had That's this. funny. <laughs> Composition. I. Um, Woodrow Wilson. Huh? Who? Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson? Was he, he was the president of Princeton and he was the English department, uh, English See? master's in English. So he busted me because I didn't know that. Obviously, yeah. I didn't go to Princeton. That's <laughs> 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 part of the joke. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That's good. Hey, anyway, well, I that one for him. I wrote a paper on Woodrow Wilson uh, when I was in college. See, now this is good. So you could give a speech on Woodrow Wilson or something. Oh, he's not very funny at all. <laughs> well, that's good. So you, he's funny than Eric Clapton. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about a what if speech? What if Woodrow Wilson were funny? You know? <laughs> and he would go over any of his speeches and add a line to make it put a punchline in his orations or something. Uh, so, so anyway, just going over that one to. Yeah, I'll give you the highlights of that speech. I, I, um, I told them how uh, I got my master's thesis in the, in the letter P. First of all, by the way, you know, most of you think, you know, Princeton University. Yeah, sure, Richard, from Texas. Well, what if I told you I could, I could recite the entire English alphabet, all 26 letters, backwards? And then I did it, you know. And then they're, then they're going, okay, well, trying to, to believe me a little bit. Give yourself so, credibility. Credibility, thank you. I like it. And so then I said, I, you know, I did my master's thesis on the letter P. The letter P is powerful. This letter, if incorporated into your vocabulary, can virtually pull you out of the gutter and put you on the perch of perpetual peace and prosperity. Poppycock, you say. <laughs> Well, listen to the facts, people. There is no other letter with a P power. In fact, power without the letter P would only be, it wouldn't work. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I wouldn't be so emotional about it if the letter P hadn't saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
It was pitch black in Pasadena. I pulled my Pinto into the partly full parking lot, parked the car. Sure, I was paranoid, but paramount, paramount, and of my primary concern was, could I watch all my P's and Q's? Forget about the Q's. Could I pronounce my P's under pressure? I pondered no more. It was him, Pete Peterson, from Pacoima. <laughs> Pete Peterson, prolific Pete, they call me. Profound, predatory, punctual. <laughs> as, as he approached, I felt a pain in my pancreas. <laughs> His piercing pupils were petrifying. <clears throat> he took a deep breath. I took a deep breath. That's what I did. Because <clears throat> oh, he looked at my piercing pupils. See, he threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'm going to win this contest. <laughs> Petrifying. Penny waste, he called me. Oh. I pulled myself together. I took a deep breath. I gave him everything I had. The perspicacity of your putrid pontification only perpetuates the propensity of your pompous persona. <laughs> <laughs> Then I started a business helping other people to the pea power. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I, I had a better closing, but just. You're the tutor, you might not know. No, the main thing, I just want to see. I, I, I knew how to say the alphabet backwards. You see what? I just went off on that and got a whole speech just on. So I found out something that I could do. So um, you guys have that. I, who was it that. I gave a speech on, on Tall Tales, and one of the contestants said, I can make a great martini. <laughs> and he realized, you know, he could bring his shaker, and he... Enrico. And it was Enrico. 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 Enrico did that. He did the whole speech on that. That was yeah. from there. Yeah. And, and then he drank it. After after. <laughs> <laughs> and he shared it, too. How did, how did he do on the speech? I thought he did really well. He made it to the division, I think, didn't he? Yeah. See? And he yeah. had a lot of fun. You know, just, he did have a lot of fun. So, with that. so that's just something that he could do well. And, yeah. and he incorporated speech around. Practice like Sperling. Practice with the Marquis. Very nice. Here's one I, I won with. I can't remember this whole speech, but I put it down. Uh, I could. Uh, uh, I, I took. Oh, I talked about experience, because that's the other, the third thing. Talk, you know, experiences you have had. Mm -hmm. This you life can experiences. life experiences, especially the the most the more unusual the better. The, the like if you're talking about your kids or like your the one something you're passionate about. about. Something you're passionate about. Something some real meat. Man, just write it because there's half your speech right there. Just telling the story, and just you can exaggerate parts of it and and make real life. My second wife. No comment on how many there's been. <laughs> my second wife, let's see, my, my wife, second wife, Peg, uh, her father uh, worked for Exxon in New York City, so she grew up in New York City. Now, I said it that way to, to go back to uh, the first part. H how did that sound? versus taking all the crap out and getting to the point. And this is what, what, when I took all the crap out and started that speech, I said, my ex-wife is from New York City. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> how, how good is that for setup versus my na 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 I took all the crap out. And it starts out, that speech it, uh, started out with, 
I'm getting tired of people saying I talk too slow being from Texas. I don't talk too slow. Everybody else just listens too fast. <laughs> My ex-wife was from New York City. She was a fast talker. She could hear what I said and tell me to shut up before I even opened my mouth. <laughs> so, so anyway, that came from experience, and then some people say I to talk too slow. And oh, I, the next line I went, he says, another setup. After I got that lap, I lost my job. Boss said I was too slow. What's the big deal about being an air traffic controller? It's, <laughs> <laughs> things take off, things land, make sure they don't hit each other. I only lost one plane. <laughs> anyway, so that's an example of delivery. See how the delivery just, you can slow it down and just punch it. It doesn't have to be a fast speech, no, 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 no. you can just pace it out. Okay, so that's, you yeah, have skills. You can have uh, experiences. Uh, see if I have enough. Oh yeah, I won. I won the district. I won the district tall tales contest. You know how I won, and that's the first contest I won in Los Angeles. I had won a humor one district contest, humor speech contest in Houston when I first joined Toastmasters, and I came out to LA in late eighties. Late eighties. Early days. Early days, thank you. And uh, Hollywood and Vine Toastmasters Club. And I, they had the Tall Tales contest coming up, and I was thinking uh, about the uh, animal calls that I could do. I said, you know, wouldn't it be great if I could, because people have commented before that, hey, they're, it's kind of cool, how do you do that? And I said, well, I'll write a speech about these animal calls. Mm -hmm. And I can could, I could make a duck, you know, you know, I could make uh, a horse or donkey, and and other things. And I wrote a speech about. It. You guys, have, you've heard it. Go ahead. I think you should do that. Oh my God. Okay. Well, uh, well, th th this will this will help. Even though it's a tall tale, you know, a good, a winning, in my opinion, the the winning tall tales are ones that have have humor in it, and so. This is a humor seminar, so I'll, I'll give this one. Since even though it's not a humor speech, it's a talk. So, tell your costumes. So costumes, which by the way, you all seen contests, and sometimes people really do well with their costumes. And on this one, I, I, I had uh, my hand in a, in a sling, and oh, I had oh, I had a, um, a World War II bomber. Flat cast. <laughs> it was cool. It was the leather. I found it at, at a, uh, a army supply store, and so I walked out, and I had a crutch, and I walked out. It's Richard Stewart, call a wall, call a wall. Richard Stewart, and I put my trust crutch down. You know, war is hell. I'm not talking about the sissy wars. I'm talking about the big one. W-W-I-I. <laughs> yes, I remember it well. Too well, I'm afraid. It was mid-December. I was in the air, 5,000 feet above Normandy, France, 1944. Sure, I was only four years old. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, I sort of took pride in the fact that I was the youngest fighter pilot working for General Patton. It had been a long war. I was tired. I was thinking of Christmas. How nice it would be. Bing Crosby. Bob Hope. Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly I was hit. Enemy ground fire. Smoke began to fill the cockpit. I knew I was going to be alive. I hit the eject button, but my hand got caught in the steering mechanism. I was thrust into the air. You could hear the bones crack. Permanent damage. 
paralyzed to this day. It's a war wound. I knew I had to bail. As I was going down, I saw the ground racing up towards me. I knew I was going to die. I started crying like a three-year-old. <laughs> I heard a voice, the voice of my grandfather. Richard, use the animal calls. Use the calls, Richard. I remember then the, the animal mating calls my grandfather taught me right before he died. I figured I had nothing to lose, so I tried one. Within seconds, every duck within five miles swooped together under me and cushioned my fall. I couldn't believe it with joy. Until I realized they were German ducks. <laughs> it wasn't funny. They dropped me right in the middle of enemy camp. I was dodging bullets when I landed. I knew I needed to get out of there. I, I tried another call. <laughs> Blinked my eyes and a white stallion came running towards me. I hopped on the horse. We ran away to freedom. I thought. Out of the blue, my horse stopped dead in his tracks. As if he could sense the danger ahead. There was silence. And then a howl that sounded like the devil himself. Ha! Ah, ha! Ah. A German jackass! <laughs> <laughs> In a wild fury, he kicked my horse out from under me and smashed my head up against a rock. I, I was barely conscious, but aware enough to see the whole German army marching towards me. I knew I only had one call left, and it was a tricky one. I gave it all I could. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I'll go back to questions. Since, okay, first of all, now. Oh, what? Your main point from this afternoon. The building. Oh, what? Yeah, the, the, the um, I already went over that. The, the what? Relief. Oh, yeah, you know, actually, I went into, uh, and this is kind of interesting. Okay, so do we, we have a little time? Yeah. Um, you know, most everybody knows the Renaissance papers on the Scientologists and, and Dianetics. And I, I talked about this. Uh, he said, the interviewer says, What is humor? And I said, Humor's easy. You know, I can answer that. That humor is something that makes you laugh. The real question, George, you should be asking me is, what is laughter? That's what you want to know. And he says, well, all right, what's laughter? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I said, no, well, and I went into, it's all energy. You know, we all know that the, the physical universe, the, the life, it's, it's all about energy, and this is condensed energy, and there's, you know, different levels of, of energy, the periodic table, and the, all life is energy, and when energy comes in, if it's too much, you want to get rid of it. You know, if you step your toes, ah, 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 you want the pain to release, you'll, you'll cry, or you'll yell. If... Um, Someone's angry with, with you, 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 you want to, I'm going to call him up, you want to, you've got that energy and you're holding on to it, you want to get, get rid of it. Who was it? Sarah wrote a speech about let it go. Remember the cup? Mm -hmm. yeah. What's she talking about letting go? Let the energy go, don't hold on to this energy. And that's a little clue to what, human, what laughter is. L. Ron Hubbard says laughter is rejection. And when I, to be honest, I didn't really understand that too well until recently. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you mean rejection? I'm not rejection, re rejecting uh, Steve Martin. Or, but you're rejecting that energy. You, you want it out. Just like the, you, you ever heard someone say, I haven't, don't, I don't want to talk about that. I'm not on the laugh side of that yet. Or, or you know, I don't, they're not able to laugh at all. But they want to. They, I'm still, oh, they've got all this energy and they're not able to laugh. Laughter is a way of laughing, of getting, getting rid of Getting some relief. What is uh, Seinfeld? Uh, not Seinfeld, but Steve. Mary Martin. Tyler Moore did that for the funeral of the clown. She had a famous episode where she was laughing instead of crying at the clown's funeral. It's a famous episode. Wow, I didn't that's see that. exactly. Good. Thank you for backing that up. <laughs> 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 Mary Lou. Mary <laughs> <laughs> Tyler. What? What the heck is that, man? Well, well that, that goes up back to Steve Martin, who said the definition of, you know, not the definition, but the, the mechanics of a good joke or good humor is set up punchline. Mm -hmm. He said the setup is the tension, the punchline is the relief. So, so you've got the setup, energy builds in, and then you get the relief. All the jokes we told today, uh, the, the, the humor, there was, it might have been, you know, low on the scale, it's, it's heavy pain you want to reject. Uh, by the way, which I, I mentioned today, that's a, a good plug for Dianetics. That's what you know. That's what it's all about, really. Is the pain, that you, the, the pain that you can't put your finger on. That you you don't want to carry it around anymore. You know, you just just is like holding you down. And and the, the cool thing about uh, Scientology, they've got Hubbard invented this e meter that could pinpoint that energy. And I actually told this story about that because it's energy and, and, and it, it relates. I sold dynamic books in Houston, and we, we, I would just, a table like this at a flea market, and I put the books up there, but I put, like this almost looks like, it, I put an e-meter. You guys seen the e-meter? Uh, no. It's, it's a meter, and, and it just registers the energy. You might have seen they do stress tests, and you hold the whole thing. So, so here was the meter, and, and I, here's the two cans, of, you know, wires, just a battery connection. I would just sit down and wait for someone to come by. And this old country guy walks out. What the hell is that? <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh no, I'm, I'm in trouble here. And I was just new to, you know, I thought this would be cool. So I, but I, I, I knew quite a thing, you know, enough. I'd studied it and I said, well, it, this is a, a meter that registers mental energy that you have and uh, it's, it also pinpoints negative energy that you can release. Here, hold these cans, I'll show you how it works. You know. So he holds the cans and I said, see the, the dial and I got the needle. I said, see how that needle's floating? I've got you set and I would set him so it's right there. So now I'm going to give you a little pinch 
watch what happens to the needle. And he looks at me and, and I give him a little pinch, boom, the, the needle goes down. You see, you, you've got a little pain and your mind registered a little pain and it showed up. It's that sensitive. And now, here's the cool thing. I'm going to watch the needle. I'm going to ask you a question. He said, okay. And I said, recall that pinch. Boom. It just went down. Just, he went, wow. Because when the thought of that pain, when he thought of it, boom. That's why they call it, you know, on the, the uh, tours, they say, see a thought. You know, you can, with the e-meter, you can see what, when I... When I thought of that pinch, boom, I saw it. So you see the connection. But here's the cool thing. Then I said, now, I could ask you to recall any traumatic incident, any stress in your life, anything that happened, and it'll show up on the meal. And then I'd shut up. And so then all of a sudden, bam, this one was a big fall. I said, like that right there. And he goes, Henry, come here. This is my car wreck right <laughs> Whatever he he can, in his mind, all that he's carrying with him, and, and then I just sold a lot of dynamics. I said, this book here shows you how to get rid of that that uh, energy, and you don't need to carry it around. So uh, that's what it, what a uh, laughter is higher on the scale. It's not pain like a car wreck, but it's still when there's tension, even if it's hey that's illogic, that doesn't make sense. You know, you're you're kind of. We like things to be in order, but we like to put order in the world, you know. We like to make our bed in the morning after this mess. So when someone tells us something and it's going in this direction and does it starting not to make sense, and then it boom goes way over there, then oh you're just kidding, it's a joke. There's the release of all that energy that you were putting into it. I don't know if that makes sense, but that that's uh, that's why uh, uh, laughter is can be called rejection if you're rejecting the energy. Yeah. And listen, that's why I tell you, what could be better than giving a humorous speech, making people laugh, and getting, you know, raising them their spirits. And that's why I really enjoy it. And that's why I enjoy being your speaker today. Thank you. Very much.